OBS project just launched a beta version of OBS Studio. This one is pretty interesting because it gives you the opportunity to stream in AV1. You remember the codec you were talking about like four months ago while I was testing the Intel Arc A380? Well, guess what? Now you can stream using it. So you know me, I had to jump onto it and try it myself. And first things first, I launched the stream. People, like all the viewers, they were getting crazy. They were like, dude, I can't believe my eyes. The resolution and whatever I see on my screen through your stream is just insane. So people were just shouting in the chat. I start to receive like hundreds of thousands of sub. This was so intense. Nah, um, no. Nah. This is not exactly how it went, okay? But you, you want to know exactly how it went? Let's go. Hello, I'm Air Max. AV1 recording is not really new. Uh, I've covered it in November 2022 after finally getting my hand on an Intel Arc A380. And what is new this time is the fact that OBS pushed an OBS beta version which supports AV1 streaming. That's the big news. And they were able to do that because of the implementation of uh, a new RTMP protocol, which gives you the opportunity to stream directly to the streaming platform. I think it's called RTMP Plus, something like that. Um, but now it's directly implemented in OBS. On the other hand, you also have like new generation of card, which came up since, since I tried. Um, the NVIDIA like 4000 series, which was already like encoding uh, AV1. You had the Intel Arc series, which is encoding AV1 like butter. And you have also like the series 7000 from AMD, which support hardware encoding. So all the new generations, they, they can handle that pretty well. So the stars are aligned, right? They are aligned because OBS now, the, the software and the hardware are aligned to give us the opportunity to finally like test AV1 in real life while streaming, which is pretty awesome. And you know what else is aligned? Your mouse on the subscribe button. So please go there, subscribe to my channel. And if you, if you really want to help more uh, financially, don't hesitate to become a member of La Crème de la Crème Club on my YouTube channel or on Patreon in order to support me for me to continue to do this type of video. I appreciate it. So guess which platform is actually supporting AV1 streaming in first? Well, you guessed it, it's YouTube. It's not Twitch, it's not any of our, of our platform. Like it's, it's just YouTube. How do you do a stream on YouTube? Well, it's pretty easy. Well, I tried and the first time was actually a success. Believe it or not, like I didn't have to, you know, tweak stuff, I just, press live and it went right through, through it. So two things to consider. If you already set up on YouTube, you have nothing to change. Uh, what you have to change really is on the other side on OBS, you're going to have to go through the settings and uh, switch, uh, you know, like two line. It's nothing complicated. Um, but b before I go there, I want to talk about Linux. So I had to make all those tests on Windows. Because to be able to use OBS on Linux, uh, you have to compile it, and especially the beta version of it, and or you have to use Flatpak. And I didn't want to do neither of them. I'm just waiting for the normal release. This one is a beta, so I switch on Windows just just for the sake of this test. Uh, test, not test. Oh my God, what am I saying? Um, so yeah, I switch to Windows. My Windows partition get there. Boom, uh, I'm going to share here like the OBS settings. Um, they are pretty similar to the H2641. Like I, I was using the RTX like 1490 this time because uh, it's in my main PC. I, I didn't want to use Intel uh, for, for this test. And um, yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I used 12,000 kilobits per second for this specific test and also i was running the quality p6 through my av1 setting on obs as you can see here um then what i did like i streamed for like two hour and a half and i tried three different games to 
you know, to have an idea on how the output on YouTube would look like. Because when you think about encoding, you, you really think about your viewer, right? I want you to do the test with three different games. So the first game is um, Apex Legend. The second one, I think, is the Valheim. And the third one is Hogwarts Legacy. And the idea is like, we're going to stream at 60 FPS because this is a maximum on, on YouTube. And I want to see, like, depend, depending on how much motion goes into it, how the, the codec actually reacts. And see, like, you know, like, how, how it look like, really. Uh, the other hand, you know, for the benchmark, we call that a benchmark, uh, I did record the output for the stream locally, and also, like, div downloaded the VOD from YouTube. Like that, I can tell, like, what is the real difference between, like, why I didn't code and what was the output through YouTube. Because what you need to understand is like, Not a good idea for me. you encode in AV1, you send it to the YouTube server, but then on their end, they transcode it to their own codec called VP9, okay? And, um, you know, it, it's really, really to have an idea of how it looks like on the other hand. So I did download the two files. So what you are watching right now on the screen is like on this side, you're gonna have like the AV1, like local recording. And on the other side, you're gonna have the VP9 recording from YouTube. So the idea was really to check like three different like big key points in my opinion. Uh, the local recording is good enough to do editing or upsampling to 4K for example, to make a, a YouTube video at this super low rate. Uh, the second point I wanted to check is like if the quality difference exists between like what you actually record locally like you send to YouTube and what, the re what is the real experience from a viewer standpoint. That's the second point I want to go through. And the third one is like, how is the game performance impacted versus encoding in H.264, for example, or HEVC, just to see how my graphic card will handle like AV1 versus any other codec. Was the local uh, recording good enough? It's not bad. I, I would say like it's still usable, uh, but you won't have the level of granularity I had, for example, on a 50 megabyte HEVC uh, local recording for 1440p. Okay, you it <laughs> it's three times the amount of bandwidth. But what I'm saying is like it look awesome for only 12 megabyte. Okay, but it it's not as good as as the old school like high bandwidth uh, recording, local recording, that, that's for sure. But let's say now you don't really care about the quality itself because you think you're going to use those videos in like, for example, like pushing to YouTube again, which is going to downsample it anyways. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's actually a pretty smart idea, in my opinion. Um, also, like, if you have a problem in terms of space, if you record, for example, like eight hours of gaming every day, and those files are like insanely big. Well, RV1 is going to certainly help you there. Like from my testing, you're going to divide your storage by like three or four, which is which is huge. Now, if you want a high quality lossless recording, I would say like stay on HEVC for sure until we know exactly with AV1 what are the best settings to get there, and also like like the encoding platform to mature a little bit. Because I think we are at the straight beginning of it, even if it, 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 it does exist for years from a software encoding standpoint, but from, from the hardware encoding standpoint, it's still pretty fresh. So I would say like, if you want to keep like really good quality, like stay on the older codec. Well, my recommendation will be HEVC uh, 10 bit, solid. Now the second point, is YouTube transcoding AV1 to VP9 for the viewer really hurting like the viewing experience. I don't know if you noticed, but on left side you have a V1, on right side you have VP9. And to me, it look almost exactly the same. And I was pretty impressed by that because I was expecting the output of this video to be like, wow, YouTube, uh, you are like destroying the quality of the V1. Why are you not just pushing everyone directly? And on my good surprise, we, we still have a little bit of loss of quality, you can see it on some certain movement, but it's not as big as I thought. And also, like, what is actually funny is like when I re-downloaded the video from YouTube directly, uh, I noticed that the VP9 file is actually 10% smaller 
than the AV1 file. What is interesting is that you lose a little bit of quality compared to AV1, but they were able to even like lower the amount of data they transfer towards the viewer. So there is a real value added from their hand in terms of bandwidth to, to do the job, which is super interesting, right? So the last point, how is the game performance impacted versus encoding in H.264 with the same graphic card? Well, it's because I was using a single PC stream setup. Well, that's the most interesting point in, in my opinion. What you need to understand is like when you encode on the same PC, and that was it was big problem before, and most of the pro gamers had to use a second PC. It was because like if you encode on the same PC, it will take so much resource on your graphic card that it will create like stutter and also like decrease the amount of FPS you see on your own screen while encoding. And it, it was a big problem. And it's still a big problem for, you know, I would say like all the users uh, which are using like not last generation card. With AV1, I was really surprised to see the amount of resources AV1 encoding was taking on my graphic card. So to give you an example, if I, if I encode like the same game, the same type of stream like Apex Legend with this card, in H.264, so on 1490 RTX, it will use around like 30% of the resources for the encoder. Long story short, I don't want to get too technical, but it kind of like impacts my FPS. Not by a lot on this card, but it still impacts it. With AV1, it was just taking 12 to 13% of resources while encoding, which is just crazy. Like we are just dividing by three, like by two or like by two slash three, the amount of resource required to get a better encoding output at the same bandwidth or with a lower bandwidth. Like it's just insane. The optimization and the efficiency uh, toward AV1 in terms of loadout on your graphic card is, is just out of your mind. Another point is like with the Intel card, the ARC 380, I also noticed like encoding in AV1 was taking less resources than encoding in any other uh, codec and this was pretty interesting so i don't know what type of wizardry they did there but it's working pretty well so what is the outcome of this test well first learning is that it works this is possible and the results from my standpoint are pretty mesmerizing you have an improvement in quality at the same bit rate which is pretty awesome and even if we already knew that, uh, putting it in practice and testing it with my community and having them like on chat saying like, wow, this is looking so good. I was exaggerating a little bit at the beginning of the video, but I had a lot of positive feedback, which is pretty good. Now, uh, do, do you need an AV1? Like, does the quality of your stream is going to be really impacted by AV1 right now as I'm recording this video? I would say no, okay? Like if you don't have an AV1 card, let's say you got a 30,000 uh, RTX series or even, even a previous one, I don't think you need to jump in the AV1 train yet, okay? And, and I'm going to tell you why. Like um, most of the platforms are not ready for it. YouTube just implemented it. OBS is still in beta, but you need to keep in mind that it could be a game changer if you are a streamer. It could be a huge game changer. Let me explain. Let's say you have a second PC right now. The price of this, this full PC, you know, with a mixer and everything related to, you know, the dual PC. I don't want to get there, but you, you get me. Like there is a lot of hardware you could sell and then like reinvest in a graphic card, which is able to do AV1. Because from my testing, this is going to end in my opinion, the dual PC streaming setup. I see, it, I see it as clear as water because of the complexity related to a second PC and because of the fact that now, you know, like streaming on an AV1 ready card, encoding card, doesn't take that much of resource and doesn't impact your video game experience at all. Like at all. So you're going to be saving energy by just running one PC. You're going to be able to uh, get rid of all the issues related 
to the sound, because I know what I'm talking about, sound in a dual PC is a mess. You lose one cable, you have to redo all the setup, frown, what's happening, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you, know, you know the deal. This is game changing. Obviously, it's not a reality, especially for the, the Twitch uh, streamer, which is now, like, I guess, the majority of the streamer, like, they're on this platform. Uh, maybe Twitch could start to really investigate into everyone, like, hard, like hardcore, get there. And, you know, with this bandwidth, they're actually saving by just using everyone. They could increase the streamer uh, split, <coughs> you know, uh, stopping the 50 50 uh, cut and go to uh, 70, 80, 20. I think it would be fair because now they're going to save so much money by not sending like that much bandwidth everywhere because of everyone. Twitch, if you see this video, <laughs> well, you, you, you get it, right? That's it, that's all. That was the point of this video. If you want to watch the full stream, I'm going to put the link below. Also, I want to thank all my subscribers, all my members, and all the Patreon supporters who are making this adventure possible. Another point, before I before I leave, okay, another point I totally forget to talk about because I'm, I'm doing that, like, you know, on the, on the thing. What I would like to test, and let me know in the comment below if you like to see it. I think it could be interesting to see if I could encode with the Intel Arc 380 and uh, let's say like a, a 1080 Ti in the same PC. Put one really old school card and uh, Intel AV1 Arc in the same PC and see if I could stream. That's something I would like to do. Uh, let me know in the comment below if you'd like to see like uh, this type of uh, test. I think it could be interesting. Okay, see what type of output I have. But I need your feedback, okay? So please uh, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Boop, 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 boop. Bisous, bisous.